Well, the Capital Gazette is a local newspaper. You may have a paper like it in your town. Some of the staff members tweeted earlier tonight that it's not a big newsroom. They're close, they're family, and they're devastated. One staff writer, Phil Davis, wrote this tweet not long after the shooting. He said, there's nothing more terrifying than hearing multiple people get shot while you're under your desk and then hear the gunman reload. Just before air, I spoke with Phil Davis and another Capital Gazette staff writer, Celine Saint-Felice. Understandably, some of their descriptions are emotional and there is some strong language. Phil and Celine, I, I'm so glad you're both safe. I'm so sorry uh, for all that's gone on. Phil, if you can start, just kind of walk us through what, what you saw, what you heard, because I know you tweeted that the gunman shot through the glass door to the office. Yeah, so um, the timeline is, uh, I'm, I'm struggling to exactly remember when it happened. I'm sure police have described it, but uh, uh, one gunman shot through uh, the glass door to our office. We are we are in a shared office building. We're in one of the suites um, and uh, started opening fire on several of the employees inside uh, once he got entry. Um, what floor are you on? So we're on the first floor. Okay. Um, and we're relatively close to uh, the main entrance. And, um, you know, as we're, we're, we're a suite that's right near the main entrance, and there's a lift. Um, in the front of the building that shows where which each office is and where it would be in the building. You, you said he shot through the front door. Did you actually see him, or did you just hear that? I, I did not see him do it, but I did see the door shatter. Um, uh, essentially, he shot through the front door. Uh, the glass shattered. I turned around to see it, and then once I started to realize that something was up, I didn't know what it was. I just assumed the worst and uh, kind of hid under my desk and didn't see anything uh, after that until uh, he was apprehended. The, uh, and Phil, you said uh, the initial shot through, the, you saw the, sh the shattering. How quickly after that were there further shots? I mean, and, you know, Celine, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it seemed pretty instantaneous. It, it was, um, you know, he, he was going down our um, newsroom, uh, starting from the front, um, and, uh, yeah, just just continually shooting people at one point. Uh, I'm pretty sure I heard him reload um, while I was still under my desk where he was only a few feet away from me. And, uh, I mean, it wasn't, it, it, it was not a long event. I mean, it's, it certainly felt like an attorney, and I'm sure anyone else that had gone through something like this would say the exact same thing. But it, um, it, in all honesty, it probably took all of two to three minutes. So, Celine, where were you, and, and did you, wh what did you first hear? Um, so I sit pretty close to Phil. And um, we sit in about the same area, but I don't know what I was... I mean, I remember I was working at my desk when I heard the shots, and it took a couple of them for me to realize what was happening. And I looked at Anthony, the intern, and um, I said, I'm getting out of here. And I grabbed my purse, and I went to the back door, which I was only a couple steps away from. And it was locked. Um and I said, it's locked. And uh, at that point, it was me, Anthony, and then John McNamara and uh, Rachel Pacella. And uh, Anthony and I got under a desk. Rachel went to the door, um, but she tripped. And I think that's how she, she ended up getting hurt. Um, and I think she got behind a filing cabinet. And I think John was still trying to get out the door. Um, I'm not sure what, I'm not sure exactly in the next couple of seconds what happened, but then I know that John was standing up. I heard the footsteps and he, it, John got shot. It was very close. Um, I saw him get shot, but I didn't see the gunman or, or anything. Um, and he fell down. And, I mean, I heard footsteps a couple times. My purse was on the floor, at, just out, out, away from the desk, and my sunglasses were on the floor. And I'm sure I, I was breathing really loud, um, and I was trying not to, but I just, I couldn't be quiet. And he never came to our side, but I did hear footsteps very closely. And then we're trying to call 911, but, uh, you know, I'm sure you know the rest of the story. Yeah. And, and I know 
I, as as uh, as Phil said, Celine, I mean, time is difficult to tell in a situation like this. Were, were was anybody saying anything? Was was the was the gunman saying anything? Were, was were people being quiet? Do you remember the sounds? I just remember the shots. I just remember. I don't remember if it was before or after the shot. John said, "What the f and um, and those are the only words. I can remember. I don't know. I didn't hear anybody yelling. We just, from the sounds, we knew it was happening. But I didn't hear anything else besides the shots. Yeah, I, I would say that's that's accurate. It was as soon. I think as soon as everyone found out, everyone got dead silent and tried to hide under their desk. But it was clear that he went after some people that were. And Phil, I mean, I know you're you're a crime reporter. Uh, I mean, the, you, you cover this, this kind of stuff professionally. Obviously, it's a completely different thing when, when it's you underneath the desk. Can, can you just describe um, what was going through your mind? Um, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, when it, when it first started to happen, um, I mean, you just, you just immediately go into panic mode. You don't know why they're there, who they're going after, if it's random, if it's... Uh, you know, a family or a domestic dispute or, or what have you. So you just try to get yourself out of it. And then, you know, once I started hearing that he was kind of making his way um, up the hall um, or up the alleyway or whatever you want to call it, you know, that runs through the pit of deaths in our office, um, just trying to stay quiet, hoping that the glow of my computer screen didn't point out the fact that I was hiding under my desk, hoping that, you know, the various buzzings on my phone wouldn't, put out my, you know, position to him and ultimately try to get, or him try to find out where I was. And, you know, at some point when I was listening to him reload, it's, it's, you know, are we all going to die? It's not necessarily, is he done? It's, is he not going to leave until everyone in here is dead? Yeah, that was um, about the same for me. And, had had you, uh, Celine, had you and your colleagues done any active shooter training drills or, or, you know, any even fire escape kind of drills? No, we've just, um, no. We we cover the drills that uh, would happen at the schools, but, like, we never had one. And um, there have been some, some talks. And not to butt in too much, but there there have been some talks where part of the Baltimore Sun Media Group that I can remember of, you know, um, again, I'm not trying to attribute it to anyone, but simply, you know, a heightened sense of, uh, you know, awareness when it comes to newsrooms as to, you know, protect their own and the like. So there there were some talks um, before, but we, we never went, underwent any of that sort of training, no. And and Phil, had you or, or any of your colleagues seen the, the shooter before? No, I mean, I, well, I don't want to speak for, for everyone because we're not all here on this call. And I know at least uh, one other person that wasn't in the office, and I imagine some others as well were questioned because they were with me at the police department. But when police showed me uh, the photo of the guy, I didn't see him until after they brought me into the department. He, he didn't stand out to me as someone that either we would have known or we should have known. And were, was, was anybody aware of any threats made at all to, to the office? Uh, obviously, newsrooms are, you know, uh, uh, sometimes receive threats. Uh, not recently. Um, or, uh, you know what, in all honesty, I've been there for about two years. I don't think we had ever, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we'd ever discussed any sort of real adamant threat. Certainly, you know, some, you know, more animated commenters every once in a while they tell you not to antagonize them or whatever because you just never know but never any sort of real threats or anything came across our desk to our knowledge no and and what, um, sorry go ahead Slim. oh i'm sorry i just uh yeah i just we had maybe like an incident where somebody was trying to like track our boss but, I mean, it was basically blown off as, like, oh, this is just a crazy person. Um, and, I mean, we went to the police about it. Like, they know about that, and that is not this person. Um, and I have to say that what happened here was very calculated, but yeah. not personal enough, I think. I think that this person was going after editors, and... Um, 
and I could be wrong, right? Like, I don't know anything, but that's what happened here. Editors died, and, um, and but, you, yeah. You think that might have been intentional, or is that based on where people were sit sitting? I mean, I don't know for sure. It's, it's just the facts. Editors died, and um, yeah. that's all I know. Yeah, the, the, the path that he took... Um, and I, we have not, um, I, I don't know about Celine, I, I have not connected with some of the advertising people who were up in the front um, during the time that it was happening. But the, the path that he took, um, I don't know. As, as, as Celine said, John was getting it, just trying to get out, so maybe it was just a, an opportunistic shot. But um, I know two of the editors that he went after were in a same, similar position to the other reporters where they were at their desks. Can you say what he looked like, Phil? I can just, yeah, um, so police showed us a photo of him um, once they brought us into the department. He was uh, kind of a, uh, I want to say maybe late 20s, early 30s, white male, um, maybe 5'7", five, 5'10", five, in height, long, black hair uh, that was kind of unkempt, um, you know, uh, not a very descriptive face. I can't, I mean, enough, no, no distinguishing features on the face that, you know, wouldn't, make him stand out out of a, in a lineup outside of his hair, really. And Celine, how are you holding up? Um, I mean, I watched someone die, so not super great. Um, I was under the desk with Anthony, and I think we had a lot of support with each other. Um, I could be definitely, obviously, doing worse, but... Um, it's hard for me to think past the next 30 minutes right now in my life. 30 minutes is a long time. Mm. And um, I just, the answer is not good, right? But um, I'm here and I'm talking to you, and I know that a lot of people are listening. Um, I have heard that President Trump sent his, prayers um we i'm not trying to make this political right but we need more than prayers i appreciate the prayers i was praying the entire time i was under that desk i want your prayers but i want something else I yeah there's um no it's um I, I, and maybe people that don't know what it's like and certainly i, I would never hope anyone to go through a situation like we just went through it it makes you feel powerless it makes you feel helpless it's it removes all control from every facet of your life within only a few seconds once you understand what's happening and you know this is this is a situation where these were people that were working in an office who were doing their job who had no reason at least to the best of our knowledge to think that someone like this would have a motive to come in there and gun down employees who were just doing their job that day who had no seeming motive uh to hate this man and were you know to, to celine's point about prayers you know i you're right i was i was praying when he started reloading that shotgun that there weren't going to be more bodies and you know what if we're at a position in our society where all we can offer each other is prayers then where are we where are we as a society where people die and that's the end of that story? This is going to be a story for how many days? Less than a week. People will forget about us after a week um, unless, you know, we keep tweeting. I don't really care about tweeting right now. Um, people are, this is, I honestly didn't even expect to be talking with Anderson Cooper today. Um, I thought people would get like a Apple news notification and they would just blow it off. Like, like what happens to everybody? I reported on, on pulse when pulse happened. i I went to school in Florida and, um, I remember being so upset hearing about the victims who were texting their families. Um, and there I was sitting under a desk, texting my parents, telling them that I loved them. And I just, I just don't know what I want right now, right? 
but I'm going to need more than a couple days of news coverage and some thoughts and prayers because it's our whole lives have been shattered. Um, and so thanks for your prayers, but I couldn't give a f- about them if there's nothing else. Celine and Phil, yeah. uh, I, I, again, I'm, I'm sorry it's under these circumstances, but I appreciate the strength of, of you both talking. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.